process in Tibet. Over the last seven decades, uh, what did we experience? What did China did on us? And then I will move on to the, in terms of education, the curriculum of control and the cultural religious discontinuity in the school system. And then I'm gonna add a, a new political discourse. And then the conclusion part, it's a recommendation and uh, that's part. So um, how China did start colonizing Tibet? Or how do we, as a Tibetan, we, how do we need to define the definition of the colonization in Tibet? So China's colonization started by military invasion. And uh, I can share a little funny story. On the evening of 1951, uh, May 23rd evening, on the signing, um, the reception of the signing the 17 point agreement, the Chinese Chairman Mao holds a cup in the alcohol with chair, he did a chair with uh, Zhang Guohua, or the Li Han. He signed uh, the 17 point agreement represented by China, China side. He says, you are the most important guy tonight because you be able to strategically be able to put the Tibetan as a frog into the boiling water. What we needed to do is, uh, since today, it's, uh, from today, it just increase the temperature under the uh, boiling water. That's he started his plan. Initially, he has this plan. It's not a, uh, about helping or developing our society. It's a really, uh, it's a ideological conspiracy start there. Um, so the scope of Tibet, I, now I think we need to know, uh, keep in mind, since China changed Tibet to Xinjiang, we need to emphasize the term, when we call Tibet, we have to say TR and the 10 Tibetan autonomous prefectures and the two counties. We have to say every time, because they, this is a legally, they uh, admit uh, in, the, in China, so Tibet area. If we don't say this, then China will minimize the, the entire scoop of the nation to the TR. Mm, this one, the second part is the Tibetan population no longer six, six million. Now, according to China's uh, 2020s uh, population census, it's already 7,800,000 more than that. So approaching that. This is a large amount of the population and the land that China colonizing, China colonizing. So the Tibetan language and the culture are completely different from Chinese language and culture, uh, as we know. So the um, seven stage of the colonization and its application to Tibet. We see the seven stage. The, this seven stage is conceptualized the internationally accepted the indigenous scholar. I applied all the seven stage to the Tibet. It's exactly the fit there. And the more than that, we have more than that. First, the force, the penetration of the colonizing group. Second, the social destruction to this. The third one is external political control. The fourth one is economic dependency of the internal group. The five is a substandard social service. The sixth and the seventh is a social stratification. For example, in terms of social stratification, the China Refragmented Tibetan 
into the their poor Chinese province. We called the Ando and Kam, but they fragment into the Chi poor Chinese province. And we never, never forget this, never forget this. So this is a means perfectly fits the definition of the colonization. It is very clear, the first time I published this article, they were saying that Tibetan in China is perfectly fits the definition of the colonization. It's a colonization, the China is a colonizer colonizing Tibet. Now, it, so in terms of the education parts, the China's colonial education in Tibet, the education parts, I, they have uh, three types of boarding school. Boarding preschool starting in 26, boarding school since 1979, Boarding needy school start in 1984. And then policy in, uh, on the language and the curriculum technically replacing Tibetan language from the home society by promoting Mandarin more extensively. And the Chinese government is intending to remove Tibetan language as a medium instruction from the entire Tibetan education school system. I heard, I personally heard one of the, my um, sister-in-law who was a primary school teacher. She crying. Aga, he says, brother, do you have any idea? Our school principal already not announced holding the policy document saying, within the five and the 10 years, the China will completely remove Tibetan language and the culture from the school system. And then all those uh, young uh, teachers are facing the challenge, even not for national struggle, even for their survival. This year in Qinghai and other province, Ando parts, they already implemented that policy. The Sichuan part and Kham part, they already announced this. From next year, they're going to stop teaching Tibetan language culture in the school system. Then, what that means? The, a nation that is shaped or reshaped from school, classroom. That's why China using the education system as a fundamental tool to achieving the colonization goal, the goal of the colonization. And uh, the statistic already shows until this year, uh, TR, the population, they have uh, 3 million and 200,000 people population in TR. The 77% remains illiterate. Can you imagine? They say that we are developing. You're developing for what? For whom? You're developing for your later to transform your people to Tibet. That's the first. The second thing is you're developing that because you wanted to gain the primary legitimacy from the ground. Then that part, within the TR, we have a junior colleges students or above students, the 400,000 uh, about. It, one million and 1,700,000 1, still remains primary school level. It means not education received. Then from 2000 to 2020, how many pop Chinese population increased the NTR? Uh, in 2000, 2000, they have uh, 160,000. In 2020, they have uh, 440,000 4, uh, Chinese in TAR. It's a stat, uh, the census based on the population. Uh, I'm working on this project. We'll do the complete on the common area later. 
The curriculum issue in schools, the curriculum is key things in the education system. What do you teach? Who teaching what to whom? This is the question. The basic question to define, de redefine the education, whose education is. For example, the curriculum, Michael Conley uh, developed, has developed the framework of the curriculum issue. They say control the curriculum, receive the curriculum, plan the curriculum, and politicize the curriculum. All those three categories, the perfectly fit the Tibetan school system. They control the curriculum. They only allowed, fit. the last 20 years ago, 10 years ago, they allow uh, 10, 15 to 25 percent of the Tibetan culture could be in the local curriculum textbook, not in the national curriculum. And then receive the curriculum, Tibetan students and the parents only have the right to receive what they plan, what they delivered, Chinese delivered. And then plan the curriculum, they, in order to achieve the ideological uh, conspiracy of the, uh, with the Tibetan, they plan the curriculum way ahead. But we, inside Tibetan people, until 1995, then we realized our education has a serious problem with education or the curriculum part. When, the, when we analyze the curriculum, there's a whole issue there. Then we categorize those the curriculum controls uh, part. So the education Colonial education in Tibetan society, Tibet, the consequence of that, it's a largely, there are many more problems, but the, the one thing is with our nas national uh, security. It's the Tibetan macro social structure, the clapping on the way. Because the students are taught, completely taught by Chinese culture and the language, and then they're not practicing Tibetan language culture when they get back in the society. So at that time, as a sociologist, we call the social structure is constituted based on the social relationship. Social relationship is carried out by the cultural practices. So the school system in Tibet uh, it's uh, violating uh, the eight of 10 fundamental human, human rights. For example, violating child right, violating women's right because they, they're young, such young educators taken away from them to the boarding school. And the women wanted to hug their kids in the evening when they came back from the field, not there. So it's a women's right and the violating the cultural right, and the religious right, and the right to the nationality, and the violating the educational right, and the violating the right to the way of the life, and the violating the right to the justice. So now I want to, for the next level, I wanted to talk about this is my new uh, research finding. I want to talk about this. Where is China's prim primary legitimacy and authority of possession in Tibet? I have downloaded all those categories, historical relation of Tibet to China, and the 17-point agreement, social cultural connectivity between Tibet and China, and the resistance from non-stop, non-stop resistance from ground over the last seven decades. And then China's authority system in Tibetan society. What they, what they have now? And then the feature of China's position in Tibet, it's quite interesting, I already categorized here, I can share. So this year, inside Tibetan people already saying, just realizing, oh, this government is, has nothing to do with us. 
they're harming us than helping us. What the strategy they're using, they wanted to get a good policy to be nice to the people, the living people, but at the same time, down deeply, cutting off the cultural and the religious root. That's their strategy now, they're practicing. The feature of the uh, China's position in Tibet is first the invader, colonizer, penetrator, betray, uh, banditry, deceiver, resource rubber, and the cultural racial genocide implementer, implementer, and the repressive system of government. Some people say, how about they de develop your economic? So far, I experienced, my personally experienced, my mom passed away in 2011. Until he passed away, he never touched the Chinese currency in his entire life. To the 2020, the Tibetan people, even in the village, they can't survive without the Chinese currency. The situation changed radically like that way. And uh, they also shut down, they closed all of the high education institutions and the language uh, in the research, uh, Tibetan intellectual research activity. Uh, they sh closed uh, Northwest University in, in, for nationality in Landru, the Tibetan department is not, no longer existed. This is institutional construction, constraint. Institutional constraint. They have, with sociology we call three types of the constraint. Material constraint, structural constraint, and the sanction. Sanction. So now they're having the, doing the uh, two. Material and the structural constraint. So, what's the now? Uh, what's the left? What's the China facing? What's the China doing? Is okay. Fighting, dealing with the three key pillars in Tibetan society. One is education. One is the nomadic people. One is the monastery. Monastery, I call this the multifunctional institution of Tibet. They use a fake Panchen Lama or, to industrializing Buddhist by proposing imposing the three consciousness into the Buddhist uh, context. Um, The question, I have a question for this uh, for, uh, as a uh, conclusion. I think uh, who is the school for whom? We need to define that. Educating for furthering the colonization or what? <coughs> Where are human rights of education and the cultural practice in Tibet? Where to the future of Tibet? How do we understand the notion of the educational decolonization in Asia? Yeah. By the time I uh, would like to stop over here, if you have many que uh, any questions, I would like to answer. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gallo. Uh, I'm sure he has a lot more to say in.